Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Council Member Ruben Diaz, Chairman of the For Hire Vehicle Committee. We are here today to exercise, to exercise the oversight power of this council to solicit public testimony in this public forum regarding the published rules of the Tax and Limousine Commission regarding the enactment of the New York State law signed into law in June by the governor, which will impose a fee on all for hire vehicles which enter the Manhattan Central Business District, what we call the congestion zone during rush hour. The fee is $2.50 per yellow and green and for higher be and two hundred and seventy five for other two two do two dollars seventy five cent for other the state law mandates the TLC charge this fee to all for higher vehicle collect collect and transmit and transmit this fee to Albany for the use by the MTA. We have reviewed the proposed regulation in which the Tax and Limousine Commission will have a public hearing later this month. Having reviewed this, it is my belief this proposed regulation are totally, uh, let's see what happened. We ask the, witness, the witnesses to avoid generalities this morning, and we ask all witnesses to focus upon these three things four things, five things. How would the how would the for hire vehicle driver charge the passenger? How do we prevent overcharging and fraud? How will the fiscal the for, the for hire uh, vehicle driver collect this money? What type of record would they be required to maintain? How will this money be transmitted to Albany and the NTA? So, ladies and gentlemen, we, joined, we, are, we are joined today by Council Member Borelli. And now we are going to open the hearing for testimony, and we have the Tax and Limousine Commission, and I will ask the lawyer to take the oath of. Please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this committee and to respond honestly to council member questions? Thank you. Good morning, Commissioner. It's an honor and pleasure to have you today. And the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Chair Diaz. Um, I'm joined today by, with Ryan Wantaja, our Deputy General Counsel. Um, <clears throat> I'm here today to provide an overview of the TLC's role in implementation of the New York State congestion surcharge that will be required by the state law Article 29C beginning on January 1st, 2019. In October 2017, Governor Andrew Cuomo created the Fix NYC advisory panel to add congestion, to address congestion in New York City and evaluate potential new revenue sources for the MTA. The Fix NYC panel's recommendations included collection of a congestion surcharge on taxi and FHV trips in parts of Manhattan. In April 2018, as part of the New York State fiscal year 2019 budget, the legislature amended the state tax law to create a new congestion zone in Manhattan below 96th Street and to impose a congestion surcharge on all trips in four hire vehicles, including taxis, black cars, liveries, and limousines that begin, pass through, or end in the congestion zone. 
Beginning January 1, 2019, the state tax will assess a congestion surcharge of $2.50 in yellow taxis, or $2.75 per trip in for hire vehicles. That is black cars, including app-based companies, liveries, and greens. For shared rides, the surcharge will be reduced to 75 cents per party. If the passenger requests a shared ride, the trip will be assessed the shared ride surcharge, even if no other passenger joins. The surcharge does not apply if the trip does not start and end in New York State, or if the trip is provided on or by or on behalf of the MTA. For example, MTA accessoride trips will be excluded from the congestion surcharge. Under the state law, the obligation to collect the surcharge falls on medallion owners and FHV bases. They're solely responsible for sending the funds collected to the State Department of Tax and Finance. The state law further requires that the bases and medallion owners register as taxpayers subject to the congestion surcharge and file every month a list of all trips on which a surcharge accrued, as well as sending the amounts due for that month. On Friday, the state tax issued congestion surcharge guidance. We have copies with us if you'd like to see them for bases and medallion owners in a memorandum which is also available on their website. And we learned this morning that the state has issued emergency regulations providing further guidance on implementation of the surcharge, and we're happy to share that information with you as well. The law requires that the TLC cooperate with the state tax in administering the congestion surcharge. Accordingly, the TLC has consulted with state tax on how to reflect the congestion surcharge in TLC regulations. As a result of these conversations, the TLC on October 26th published proposed rules and noticed a hearing for November 28th. Notably, the public proposals include for taxi, they require that the taxi meter and in-taxi technology systems automatically charge the appropriate congestion surcharge when a trip touches the congestion zone and report on the details of each trip that triggers a congestion surcharge. And for all FHV bases, they are required to charge and collect the applicable congestion surcharge and to report to the TLC whether the trip was in the congestion surcharge zone at any point of the trip and therefore are liable for the surcharge. Additionally, for the high volume for higher bases, a category created by intro 838C, Proposed rules also published on October 26 require them to use in-vehicle technology, GPS technology, and report to the TLC on each trip that triggers the congestion surcharge. These reports for the high volume for hire service providers will include trip route information, including when and where a vehicle entered the congestion zone during a trip. These rules will, will therefore require data points that the state has said are necessary to audit returns and payments by owners and bases. To repeat, the public hearing on these proposed rules will take place at 10 a.m. on November 28, 2018 in the TLC hearing room at 33 Beaver Street, 19th floor. We invite and encourage you and your fellow council members and members of the public to attend the hearing and provide comments on the proposed rule as we move forward on the rulemaking process required by the city charter. Um, and just two other notes. Um, one, I'm, I'm very pleased to see the translation services that are offered this morning and encourage everybody who's in the audience who'd like to take advantage of them to use them. Um, and two, um, that after my testimony today, I do have to return to the office, but I want you to be assured that for every hearing that's conducted in these chambers by your committee, I do watch the live stream video when possible and when I'm not able to. I watch in the evening the rest of the, of the hearing. So I'm aware of all of the testimony that happens after I leave um, and what people testify about and what your questions are. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. Um, <clears throat> and the governor appointed a special task force to study and report this matter.
They did so, and the governor sent the proposal to the legislature. Isn't it true that, the, that any city agency mo most use a 60-day period in order to implement the Administrative Procedure Act? Um, if you're referring to a specific provision, um, it'd be helpful if you gave me the citation, and I'd be happy to verify whether that 60 days applies in this situation. I'm talking about this issue that, we, that we're dealing today. I know. Can you give me the site for the 60 days you're referring to? It'd well, be helpful for me in answering the question. The what day, section of the law? Send the day that the law was signed. You saw 60 days in the agency. I, I, again, I, it would be helpful for me to understand what section of the law you're referring to. Since the day the law was signed, we've been in constant contact with the State Department of Tax and Finance, as well as the governor's office, um, on the timetable for when we would do implementing rules. But the primary guidance comes from the state, as it is a state law, and the state is the one that will be collecting the tax from the individual bases as well as from the medallion owners. I am referring myself to the City Administrative Procedure Act. CAPA? Yeah. And CAPA relates to our rulemaking process, which we are in the midst of. It's a uh, open comment period right now where we welcome your comments on the proposed rules that we have um, put on our website and in the city record on October 26th. And the relevant timeframes under CAPA are there must be 30 days of publication before we have a vote. Ba finish? Based on that, based on, on, this, on the City Administrative Procedure Act that give agencies 60 days to implement uh, the procedure, what did you agency why did you agency wait until the last possible minute to issue this regulation? Uh, it is guidance on how this is collected is actually coming out right now as we speak from the state. We published rules on October 26th, and there was not much time actually between the passage of the law and implementation. So those rules are subject to public comment and we welcome your thoughts on how they could be improved and we'll have a vote on them after our hearing on November 28th. Uh, how, how will taxi medallion owners and for hire driver base transmit the congestion surcharge to the state? So that is in both the state law and the guidance that they have recently, um, recently promulgated. Essentially, there is a website called the Congestion Surcharge Web File. Every liable taxpayer will have to first register as a taxpayer, pay a fee of $1.50, and then every month they'll have to send returns in electronically to the congestion surcharge web file, itemizing how many trips that were taken that triggered the congestion surcharge. And with sending in that, those returns, they must also send in the amount due based on those trips. Right. Well, TLC proposed rules, in, pr proposed rules include 50 dollars fine for drivers who do not collect the surcharge. How would the TLC implement that? Um, give me one moment. I want to consult with my Deputy General Counsel okay. on the provision that you're referring to. Are you referring to section 29 of our proposed rules? Both of the proposed rules, and they have a lot of fines in there, but two of them. Yeah, I'm, I'm reading your proposal, 80-19. 
and 80, that's 19B? Right, so that's section 29 and section 30, and those are actually two changes to our proposed rules that are entirely unrelated to the congestion surcharge. Um, in section 29, we got rid of the authorized group ride taxi line and changed it to a more general description offering <clears throat> more flexibility, a public transportation facility, and did the same in 30. So these are two what I would describe as sort of cleanup provisions that are in this proposed rule package but actually don't implicate the congestion surcharge. And the $50 fine attached to both Section 29 and Section 30 have no applicability to the congestion surcharge, which is required in the section above it, Section 28. Thank you. You're welcome. How do we prevent overcharging and fraud? Excuse me? How, do, how, will we, how will we prevent overcharging when collecting the fee? How, how overcharging and fraud be prevented? Um, that's a good question. So what we do generally is we do audits, we review records, and we get consumer complaints. And a perfect example of that is, if, I don't know if you recall, rate four. There was a time when taxi drivers, um, some taxi drivers were overcharging passengers by pressing rate four on the meter and they were getting an out of town rate rather than the normal rate for an out of town trip. Um, and that came to light through consumer complaints and then reviews of the records. Um, and we continue to do that in all sectors to ensure that we're able to catch when there is overcharges. And when there are overcharges, those drivers are um, prosecuted and they have to pay a penalty and sometimes lose their license. Okay, will you, will you take me again, how will the for hire driver collect this, this money? The rules that we have proposed and the state law require that every for hire trip, the amount that's added, that there must be an amount added to the trip that must be passed on to the passenger. And the relationship between the driver and the base requires that the base collect that surcharge from each trip that they dispatch to a driver, whether that's a credit card or a cash trip. The base has to hang on to that money, 275 per trip, and then at the end of the month, send all of the surcharges that it's collected to the state electronically via their congestion surcharge web file website. Thank you. Would, 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 the driver, would the driver be required to maintain a record? It's the responsibility of the base to retain the record, not the responsibility of the driver. The base is the taxpayer in this instance, not the driver. Uh, how are you? How are you? How are you? Are proposing that this money be transmitted to Albany? <clears throat> it's a, a state tax, and so that is a relationship between the taxpayer and the state, because the city doesn't collect state taxes. So we don't have a role in collection at all. We don't have the authority to collect a state tax. So the state has asked all taxpayers, one, to register, and <clears throat> they give a website where every taxpayer must register. That's every medallion owner, every SHL permit holder, every FHV base. And then once registered, they have to file monthly returns electronically, and they have to send the money electronically as well via their congestion surcharge web file website. So, so Commissioner, would you say that the TLC is ready to go on this? The TLC, I'm not sure, if you're talking about collecting money, the TLC has no role in collecting money. We don't collect state taxes. The MTA tax that's on every taxi trip now, we do not collect that tax. Medallion owners must send that directly to the state, and they do. I'm going to let it go. Uh, 
do you, as he left, Commissioner, I have no more question for you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for being for being here today. And and I welcome your input on our hearing November 20th. I have one more question, one last question. I wrote to you and your office on October 22nd. I have a copy of the letter here. Regarding my assessment of <coughs> your regulation, which were published October 4th, but I never received a response. Any well, reason why? Yeah, so unfortunately, and I, I managed to get a copy of this letter because it was never sent to my office. It was also, there's no record of it being sent to the mayor's office. Members of the industry got copies of a letter that was addressed to me, but I myself never got a copy. It was never sent to my office. So I was only able to review it because uh, central staff at the council was able to share a copy with us after we asked about it. So we received a copy of the letter, not from your office, but from other sources only after we became aware that such a letter existed because members in the, the medallion industry had copies of it, but the city agency that it was addressed to did not. I, 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 I have been informed that too. Uh, it was sent to your office by email, and my lawyer is telling me that he sent it to your lawyer, Chris, to Chris Wood. Chris Wilson. Chris Wilson. <clears throat> Chris Wilson has received correspondence from your lawyer, <clears throat> Chris Lynn. It was regarding a request that we have an RFP for a particular company that he was advocating we use to require in-vehicle technology in the for hire sector. Uh, that does relate to the same topic as this letter, but it is not the exact same letter. Uh, Thank you, though. If, if you didn't get it, I, then I apologize. But, but I was told that you that your offer was sent to you. I, oh, I appreciate okay. the apology, and I think we've addressed today the issues that were raised on whether there has been publication of rules on high volume and publication of rules on congestion. Both of those have been published, and since we're in the comment period, we really look forward to your I input. We make sure, Commissioner, that any other correspondent from my office to you will, will you will be. Uh, you will be getting it. I appreciate it because I like to hear from you directly rather than from the from others about what you are telling me. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Okay, we have been joined by Council Member Ballon. Good morning, Council Member. Okay, now we're gonna call, who is they? We are gonna call Caroline Prot, Medallion Honor, Richard Lipsky, Alpha Strategy, Spiro, Spiros Masados, Peter A. Mesa, Celerino Bernardo.
Okay, uh, Mr. Lips. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in response to your questions in the chair about the reporting period, um, the, I believe the bill was passed in uh, the end of March, and I think it's, uh, it's appropriate to question why uh, 30 days before implementation date, we are now in a review period. It's a very short period of time uh, to address some very serious issues. So I think that uh, uh, the Commission should have been uh, more expeditious in uh, getting their act together and getting these proposed rules in a more timely fashion. But so be it. We're here. Um, I think that one major point that should be made here is that the proposed rules of the TLC are basically two separate reporting procedures, one for taxi medallion owners and the other for FHVs. The taxi medallion owners will be going through the typical barium minima through a technology system called TPEP, which will then accurately, in real time, look at the data, where they are, what they're doing, and so forth and so on, a very comprehensive system. In the proposed rules for FHVs, we have a self-reporting system that is open to the potential for abuse. Now, if we were dealing with the Boy Scouts of America, we might not be concerned, but we're dealing with companies such as Uber that have a long record of fraud, defrauding their own drivers, um, fooling with and uh, failing to provide accurate information to municipalities uh, such as Portland and Seattle through a gray balling technique. Uh, and in federal court, they were demonst they demonstrated um, that they had defrauded drivers and they called it a glitch. If we're going to have an oversight for the collection of this congestion fee, the oversight must be sa the same technology system for taxis as is for FHVs. Otherwise, we are dealing with an um, unequal system of justice. I'm going to ask you a question, Mr. Lipsky. How would you grade a TLC uh, work in, in enforcing these rules? Well, it, uh, I would give it an incomplete now, but if we're going to look at the history one to ten. of the history of the, uh, the TLC, if we look at the way in which they enforce rules for FHVs versus uh, taxis, they have one system for taxis, which is very extensive and onerous. They have another system for Uber, which is less so. How you, how, how we I would, as a former professor, I would fail them. Okay, thank you. Good morning, Chairman Diaz. My name is Carolyn Prats. I'm a medallion owner. And as a medallion owner, I'm once again mystified as to why my own government, in this case New York State, would seek to make what is already a horrific situation even worse. After eight suicides, it's hard to believe that they would even consider a new burden on the industry, which will, of course, be much greater on the yellow segment because almost all of our trips are in Manhattan and it's mostly not group rides. So we will be charged the full amount of 275 on every trip. That would represent a 17% fare increase. Um, and that would basically preclude any chance of giving the drivers a raise at any point in the future. The problem of congestion is not caused by passenger cars or yellow cabs. There's 2,000 less yellow cabs on the road. We're doing 50% less trips than we were doing in 2011. The reason we have congestion is not for the lack of congestion pricing. The reason we have congestion is that there's too many cars on the road. And I'd just like to point out that there's 6,000 more cars on the road today than there were in the middle of July. So much for the cap that everybody worked so hard to pass. There is no cap. And I'd also like to remind you that yellow taxis are mandated to be on the road, unlike black cars, which it's an elective activity. Uh, there's a couple of other aspects to congestion that's not being discussed. 
About 20% of all crashes of all types of vehicles in New York City involve TLC licensed vehicles. So it's the TLC licensed vehicles who are causing the crashes. Indeed, monthly crashes among black cars have gone up 644%, comparing 2014 to 2018. Most crashes in the city are associated with driver um, inattention. And let's face it, there's no way an app driver can function without frequently consulting a phone or a tablet. And as far as app companies self-reporting so that we can con um, collect the congestion surcharge, in light of their past performance, where they often balked at disclosing information, and then also during the federal lawsuit, TWA versus Uber lawsuit, which required Uber to produce pay records, it should be noted that the records they produced in federal court did not match the records produced by the drivers. Obviously, there needs to be a disinterested third party collecting and forwarding all the data to the TLC. So it's not on an audit basis or a complaint basis, but all the data to the TLC in real time. It's crucial to a number of measures the TLC is working on, such as driver income rules, utilization rates, and environmental studies. Anything less simply will not do. Thank you. Thank you. Let me ask you the same question that I asked Mr. Lipsky. How do you rate the work done by TLC? For this particular bill, I agree, and complete, and in general, an F. If there was something worse than an F, it would be beyond that. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, Chairman Diaz. My name is Spiros Masados. I am a licensed TLC driver, and I am a founder of Athena Technology. Athena is a newly licensed TLC licensee with a software-based technology system designed to improve the service level of taxi cabs. Our software um, basically bridges the gap between the kind of disruption that we've seen from companies like Uber and Lyft with a strong economic and regulatory approach to our transit system on the streets. We currently have over 2,500 vehicles under contract, over 200 on the road in only the first few months. Uh, and our company, our technology, is a direct response to control by technology providers that have led to nearly half a decade in terms of a response to the disruption by Uber and Lyft in traditional industries like taxi and traditional for hire. Our technology also allows us to tackle big problems like congestion in New York City and driver income de degradation um, through data tools that allow us to better understand and better regulate and enforce in a modern environment. A clear benefit the city can derive from our technology is accurate monitoring and determination of all trips that qualify for the congestion surcharge that we are discussing today. Our technology can both provide all of the data, providing essentially an audit on an ongoing basis and in an automated fashion. This allows us to know that every single trip that qualifies for the congestion surcharge, including those that transverse the taxi zone, begin in the taxi zone, or end in the taxi zone, are all independently and accurately determined to be so. This would allow TLC to not have to feed off of complaints and individual instances, but would allow us through data and through transparency to determine exactly how much is owed so that when those individuals go to those websites and submit the amount that they owe to the state in terms of this tax, we would be able to know in real time whether or not this was the accurate amount. Our technology is different from the current analog systems in three critical ways which really help us execute on this and do so on an expedited timeline that we are facing today. Number one, it's an entirely cloud-based technology, which allows us to package exactly what is needed for both the city and state in a pure software fashion. Number two, our installation process involves minimal to zero hardware. This is largely due to our system using the software and tools like GPS in order to implement the actual operational functions uh, without any kind of invasive install. This allows us, even with our current technology systems for taxis, to complete an install in under 30 minutes and perhaps even find that uh, this kind of a product doesn't even have a physical installation in the way that it applies to the congestion surcharge. 
And number three, all of these software elements allow us to adapt the system as we move so that in further conversations like this and determining how we can adjust policy and put out changes that help us tackle problems like congestion, we can have both the data and information to make the right choices when we regulate and when we create policy, but not only that, we can enforce and update in real time so that we can apply this through directives like TLC does with us as a licensee, so that is a quick ongoing process. This essentially allows our governance to meet and match the speed of innovation of the way that companies like Uber and Lyft are changing the way we transport. With, with all that knowledge and all that technology that you, have, that you are talking about, have anyone, TLC or anyone, have contacted you to, to pick up your brain or something? No, no, sir. I have reached out, but I have uh, yet to receive so a response. So knowing all those technology and comparing with what TLC has, do you think that TLC is capable to enact this legislation this on time? I believe that in the laws that we have passed, they have the opportunity to, but I have yet to see uh, a willingness to go forward and do so. See, our, our, our government needs to work with technology providers like us who essentially say, regulate me, license me, and let us put out a piece of technology that empowers the regulator. Today, we have not enough enforcement agents. We don't have enough enforcement tools. Our technology allows us to bring enforcement into the digital realm and automate it so that every individual at TLC can be further empowered to tackle a very difficult job. We are trying to regulate an FHB sector that's, both grow that's growing in both size and segmentation. It's becoming ever more complicated and thousands and thousands more trips. So a manual audit simply won't do anymore. So how will you rate the effort of TLC in, in in put, put, putting this into action. Yeah, I, I think incomplete definitely uh, covers it. Um, and, and if it remains so, we may see that F. Thank you. Mr. Mays? Sure. Uh, good morning, Chairman Diaz and members of the committee. My name is Peter Mazur, and I'm general counsel to the Metropolitan Taxi Care Board of Trade. You have my written comments, and I'm just going to paraphrase them in interest of time. On January 1st of 2019, the tax the taxi cab and the street hail livery industries will face one of the most significant challenges to confront these battered industries when a devastating surcharge on rides is imposed to uh, simply subsidize the MTA in the back of our passengers. Only time will tell how seriously ridership and driver incomes will be eroded by the new tax, but one thing is absolutely certain. The TLC, the city, and the MTA will know exactly how much to collect from taxi cabs and street hail liveries because these vehicles are equipped with technology systems that will automatically add the surcharge to cover trips and the taxes will be paid. The remainder of the livery industry will also face a surcharge on some of their trips, but there will be two significant differences. First, since there is no meter or technology system in these vehicles, these industries will simply self-report the number of trips and report to the state an amount that each base determines is appropriate. The TLC recognizes this since the rules governing the for hire and black car industries are simply amended to add one sentence, uh, directing base owners to bill and collect, but not remit the, the surcharge as applicable to the MTA. And the TLC didn't even set a penalty for violating this rule. So unlike uh, taxi cabs and SHLs where every trip is documented, the black car and delivery industries and the base owners will simply decide how many trips are subject to the surcharge. And on uh, November 26, when they work on the new uh, for ha uh, high volume for higher services rules, it will not even include this requirement. The second major difference is that liveries and black cars are, can essentially declare virtually any trip to be a group ride and pay a surcharge of only 75 cents per passenger, even if there is only one passenger in the vehicle. The passenger need only declare that he or she is willing to share a ride, even if no ride sharing has occurred. We're waiting for a clarification from Department of Taxation and Finance about group rides, which may have come out today, but the TLC rule is crystal clear. As long as a passenger has the, quote, understanding that a ride might be shared, it is a shared ride subject to potentially lower surcharge, and there is no mechanism in place other than the goodwill of the various base owners to determine how many passengers are actually in a vehicle at any given time. 
While I agree that this is a state tax and ultimately enforcement belongs uh, on the part of the state, we do have a, a, an uneven system right now because we have taxi cabs that are going to pay the tax without question and the rest of the industry that may pay the tax or some of it. So half a million people, uh, the industry that moves a half a million people a day can evade the tax while other industries will be assessed every penny. The solution is simple. The technology exists today which could be mandated in liveries, black cars, for high, a high volume, for higher vehicles to ensure that the tax is properly assessed, passed on to customers and not drivers and remitted to the state. It exists in cabs and SHLs. Why not in the rest of the industry? Thank you. Can I grade them? Let me ask you that. I'm the same question. I'm going to ask you all the same question. Right. And I, How are you rated? And I'm going to give a different answer. I'm going to grade the state first. The state gets an F for imposing the tax because this has been a, an incredibly devastating burden on this industry coming at a time when this industry is hurting. But I'm going to give the TLC an A. But I'm going to put it in my pocket and I'm not going to give it to them yet because I know that after listening to the testimony of today's hearing, after listening to what they're going to hear next Wednesday at their public hearing, they're going to do the right thing and, and adopt regulations that will level the playing field and make sure that the tax is properly assessed and collected on everybody. And I'll give the state a better grade if they close the uh, shared ride loophole and make sure that only true legitimate shared rides are paying the shared ride 75 surcharge. If they do that, I'll give them a D. I'll move at their F to a D. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, Commissioner. My name is... Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Good morning, Commissioner. Can you hear me? My name is Bernardo Celerino. I'm a medallion owner for almost 30 years. My name is Bernardo Celerino. I am a medallion owner for almost 30 years. In July 2018, we got 253,000 trips per day average down from 475,000 trips in 2011. If the Taxi and Limousine Commission or if the council members passed uh, the $2.50 charge to the passengers, I believe, I strongly believe that the yellow cab industry will lose close to 50% of its business. That means that by passing the $2.50 surcharge, the yellow cab is out of business which was the clear goal of former Mayor Bloomberg in 2013. In other words, the $2.50 will be the knockout of yellow caps. That, I want to be very clear in that. Uh, I don't want anybody here to be surprised that by mid-2019, we are in tremendous crisis and you're gonna see more suicides coming and uh, things like that will happen. You can imagine the taxi cab cannot survive with 200,000 trips a day or less, because we have very high operating cost that many of those guys driving uh, app-based cars do not have. So <coughs> basically, I go for a no if it's a $2.50 sensor charge. That is what I had to say. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, can I add? Can I add uh, one thing to the testimony? That if, in fact, the city and state do not impose an equal protection, an equal system of monitoring and accounting, that the surcharge should not go forward until and if the same system applies to everybody. That's a good point. Are you ready to rate it? Say it again. Are you ready to rate uh, TRC? The Taxi and Limousine Commission is making a terrible job, but not now, for many years. But you just give me another statement. You say... Uh, <laughs> uh, definitely a terrible job, yes. That is your question. I answer to your question. What, 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 are, what does that mean? They are behind the destruction of... A, B, C, D, F, what? F. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Or Z is better. <laughs> Jose Hernandez, Charles Komanov, Raul Rivera, Tambir Hamed, and Nicole Hem. Who speaks first? Who speaks first? Don't tell me. Did he start from here? Uh, don't. Well, where does 
Nico, Nicolai, Nicolai. I gotta go to the bathroom. Let me, let me hold it one minute. Okay, sorry, but more than nature call. Uh, we have been joined by Council Member Rose, Con Council Member Constantinides, and Council Member Rodriguez. <coughs> Sir, you turn. My name is Raul Rivera. I'm a New York City TLC driver. I was born and raised in the Bronx. Mr. Speaker, your congestion pricing bill is not needed. Your bill will drive riders away and push drivers deeper into poverty. The only bill that needs to be passed is the dollar bill. We now have a total of eight drivers who have committed suicide. And the only thing the city council cares about is, to, is, is how to make money off the back of the New York City taxi driver. Shame on you, Mr. Speaker, kill your bill now. The mayor spent $2 million on a study to show Uber and Lyft were the supposed cause of congestion in the city. When the study was completed, it showed this was not the case. Instead, your corrupt mayor redacted many pages of the study before he was forced to release the findings. Mr. Speaker, if you truly want to help taxi drivers, force the TLC to stop wasting time and give drivers pay, the pay hike we all need before, God forbid, driver number nine takes his or her life. Do it now, save a life today. You can also save the role of the public advocate, reinstate Mark Peters, fix the public housing crisis, ask the mayor and the police commissioner why they refuse to acknowledge the NYPD 12 and the ticket quotas that are driving New York City taxi drivers to poverty and suicide. I beg all taxi drivers to stand with me and the NYPD 12 and help the taxi and help end the ticket quotas now. New Yorkers, wake up, smell the corruption. Replace the current police commissioner. 
now and make Edwin Raymond the new police commissioner, reform the NYPD, reform the TLC, reform the MTA, reform the New York City Housing Authority, when we have a governor and mayor that can come together for Amazon to sell out New Yorkers and totally ignore the driver's suicides, this amounts to nothing more than political corruption. Mr. Governor, you did not have the right to rename the Tappan Zee Bridge. How much did this cost taxpayers? I voted for your father. I can only imagine how your father must be rolling over in his grave to see what you and the mayor are doing to New York City. Shame on you both. So I have one quote. Poverty is the worst form of violence. Poverty is the worst form of violence. Mahatma Gandhi. My name is Charles Komanoff. I'm an economist, a mathematician, and a longtime student of New York City traffic, transit, and transportation. I've been retained by taxi medallion interests to evaluate the proposed TLC regulations to monitor, account for, and implement the congestion pricing surcharge. My primary recommendation is that this committee direct the TLC to mandate, as soon as possible, universal digital connectivity for all four hire vehicles. This will ensure that the FHV surcharges taking effect on January 1 are properly billed and accurately collected in a process that will merit public trust. It will also lay the foundation for vital congestion pricing reforms. The expected receipts from the congestion surcharges that begin on January 1 total an impressive $400 million a year, but actually collecting the revenues will require scrupulous adherence to the surcharge rules by taxi medallion owners and for hire vehicle owners and bases. The owners and bases must understand that their surcharge deposits into the state account are being monitored closely, which requires connecting the for hire vehicles with the TLC through a continuous data link. This concern is not hypothetical. As I detail in my written submission, Uber has a history of gaming rules and regs. At present, there's nothing to stop Uber or its drivers or bases from bending the surcharge requirements to their own purposes. Especially problematic is the state's 75 cent pool ride exemption to the for hire vehicle $2.75 cent surcharge a surcharge knockoff of $2 or more delivered via an opaque and confusing formula is rife for abuse and calls out for rigorous independent monitoring. There are presently a third of a million daily zone trips using, or daily zone using trips by TNCs or Ubers and Lyfts. No one knows how many of them will devolve into surcharge shortcuts or phantom pool rides, but why leave it to chance? The City Council should direct the TLC to mandate universal connectivity for all four hire vehicles as soon as possible. Now, in my submission, I have other things to say about reforming the way in which the surcharge is structured that will reduce traffic congestion and improve driver incomes at the same time. Due to my time expired, I won't go into that in my written remarks or, I, or in my verbal remarks. I'd be happy to answer any questions. My lawyer is telling me that he has he have been meeting with you. Me. Christopher Lin. Uh, I'm Lin. sorry. My lawyer, Christopher Ling. This is my lawyer, Christopher Ling. We've been discussing. Have lawyer. you been meeting with him? Uh, um, no, we've had a few email uh, connections lately. You never met with him? No. Next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Nikolai Hand. I am a yellow medallion taxi driver since 1988, and I am an owner since 1990. I want to be very short. Uber and app cars cannot be trusted to self-report. That has to be connected to the government, to the Taxi Limousine Commission, or to the City Hall, whatever. Problem is, and I will ask you at the end, Mr. Mr. Uh, uh, Diaz, if you can pass this question to mayor, governor, and the authority. Will this 250 
help medallion owners, uh, uh, yellow medallion owners, or we're going to destroy their life. It will be more and more suicide. I said it before, when my best friend kills himself, I am saying now, will be more. Taxi Limousine Commission and the government. Can I interrupt you on this? Then I'm going to give you a time. Uh, would you please? No, uh, no, no, I'm going to give you a time. Okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, yes. But did you know this is not a city council bill? This is the, the government. That's why I said if you, if you can pass this, that question to them. Thank you. Not you, because you, you are not here when the mess was created. You are here just this year. The, the government and the Taxi Limousine Commission has a good plan. First, ignore. Then, delay, delay, delay. And this way, they'll, they're going to gain, you know, our life, our blood. That's what they, they, their plan. My opinion, I thought in the beginning, Mira Jashi, uh, is, he couldn't, she couldn't do anything. She had all the tools to stop this mess. She ignored it, and she, uh, she's doing nothing. More, more problem what, what we face. For each money what we collect from the passengers, me, the driver, or other drivers, we collect 95 cents per dollar. Five cents goes to the fee of the credit cards. That's how, uh, the, uh, the authority what Taxi Limousine Commission allowed the vendor to charge us up to 5%. So that's all gonna be for me if I will have only 20, 20 trips a day, we're going to be a, a bill of more than $100 a month only for the fee, which I have to give it to the, to the, the government, to the state. That's, those 5% will add up and more and more. And that's including the, the tolls from the bridges and the t 30 cents for the, for the improvement. I don't know if, personally, I can survive, but I'm not going to kill myself. I believe in God. And the only hope what I have is hope in God, not in politician. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let me reiterate write, write to the public. Let me, et, oh, explicarle nuevamente. Esta es una pieza de ley que el Estado no es, no es una pieza de ley del Consejo Municipal de aquí de la ciudad. Esto es una legislación que el gobernador, la legislatura del Estado, nos ha impuesto aquí a la ciudad que tiene que colectarle dos dólares cincuenta centavos a los taxis amarillos y dos setenta y cinco a los demás. Esta ley está supuesto a comenzar. En enero primero y eh, la ciudad todavía tiene el sitio todavía no no se ha hecho los pasos para, para esta ley tiene el sitio llamando una vista pública de ellos para tratar con esto eh, pronta no sé eh, prontamente pero eso es lo que estamos haciendo hoy tratando de ver cómo esta ley se va a implementar eh, de acuerdo a cómo es que la ciudad de acuerdo a cómo que el Estado nos lo está exigiendo. Pero repito, esto no es una ley de la ciudad, esto no es del Consejo Municipal. Este, esta carga, esta carga o este abuso, si podemos decirlo, es el Estado, eh, el gobernador, el que está imponiendo eso a los taxistas. I'm saying that this is, we're dealing today with the law that the state was, that the governor and the state legislature. Uh, Impose on the drivers. This is not a city law. This is not a city council law. But the law is supposed to start on January 1st, and the law is supposed to charge $2.50 to the yellow taxi and $2.75 to the other rest. And it's supposed to start according to the, to the mandate from the, from the state on January 1st. And this is a, it's, it's abusive is another uh, imposition that the state is putting on the taxi driver that I am not agree with it, but it, we have our hand tight. But we have to impose, we have to be sure that this is done. So that's what we're doing today. 
Good morning, Mr. Diaz. Uh, this is Tanvir Ahmed. I'm an active taxi driver and a medallion owner of New York City. I've been driving for 21 years, and uh, with all my experience and everything, the congestion that uh, we are seeing right now on the streets of New York City is not for yellow cabs. Yellow cabs is, uh, we are losing a lot of cabs every single day because of medallion owners cannot pay their uh, mortgage or whatever the violations they get and everything, all the fines they impose on the yellow cabs and everything. So we basically have maybe 10 to 12,000 yellow cabs rather than 400 other, 400,000 other cars that is coming to the city. New York City yellow cabs already paying the highest taxes. The drivers already, every single penny they make is accountable and they're paying all the taxes on their incomes and everything. So this 270, 250 that is imposed for the taxis, yellow taxis, first of all, it will be very hard for the driver to explain to the customers who are sitting behind. Sometime it happened to me, in my experience, the 50 cents and the 30 cents are charges, we have to explain because some people don't have any idea what is that for. And then on top of that, another 250 is gonna be impossible for them to understand because we are here and we know the rules, the people read newspaper, listen to news. A lot of people don't listen to news and read newspapers. So it will be a new thing for them to know the 250. And there will be a lot of chaos for this. And also, the yellow cabs are just like MTA buses and the trains. People use the yellow cab every single day. So for them, just like city buses and uh, the trains, we are always in the city. And we've been there for the last 50, 60 years. I don't know how long. So it will be really hurtful to the cab drivers because a lot of people are not going to use the yellow cabs anymore because of these charges, because they'd rather go to the train and use that 250 for the train or the buses. So that will be hurtful for the yellow cabs. So. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Diaz, for you know, having us. Um, I actually, have, I've been one of your constituents for over 20 years when you were in Jackson Avenue when you was a state senator. So thank you for all your service. Um, I wanted to add my comments as the only person with a physical disability here. Um, I believe that the congestion pricing should be exempt for wheelchair accessible vehicles uh, within the TLC and the for hire um, vehicle industry. Uh, getting around the city with a physical disability is hard enough as it is. Um, and it would incentivize drivers to get uh, wheelchair accessible vehicles out of parking lots and onto the roads. Um, the TLC uh, and the uh, city council already imposed a freeze on licenses and, and except for those who you know, get more uh, accessible vehicles, who get accessible vehicle licenses. And as a result, I have already noticed that there are more wheelchair accessible vehicles out on the roads. Um, I've actually had someone approach me and say, you know, do you know where I can get a wheelchair accessible vehicle as I drive myself? Um, so th the city is making strides to make uh, it easier for the disabled to get around. Uh, even the MTA um, has a pilot program that hopefully that they expand um, where they provide paratransit services through the TLC and send H services, you know, making it even easier for uh, a person like myself to get around the city. So I just ask that, you know, the TLC and the city council take into a consideration making um, this imposed rule um, exempt for wheelchair accessible vehicles. Thank you. Will you please say your name for the record? Uh, my name is Jose Hernandez and I represent United Spinal Association. Uh, Jose, I agree with you. I think that as a whole the law is it's wrong. I it's already the whole, But if, if, if it has to be implemented, some people should be absent. Yeah. So I thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have been joined by Council Member Can I Moya. say something? Can I say one more thing? Can I add something, please, Jose? One thing. I have three years of driving, over 10,000 rides. You cannot trust the apps. You cannot trust the apps. The taxi industry belongs to New York City and New Yorkers, not to, to, not to, to the gig economy, not to Uber or Lyft. Back in the day when you needed a ride, you picked up a phone, you called the base, a car came. 
You wave your hand, a car comes. You pick up a phone, another car comes. The taxi industry belongs to New York. You have to save the yellows. In order to do that, you have to make us equal. You have to unite us. You're not gonna save the yellows. If, if Uber's cheaper than the yellows, you can't do it. It's not gonna happen. The suicides are gonna continue. I'm gonna also start, on December 4, I'm gonna start a petition to reform the TLC. It has to get done. Somebody has to start it. Even if it doesn't fly, I'm gonna try. Gentlemen, thank you. Mario Peña, Bridget Felix, Basilio Beltré, Jacob Pelicano, one more. August, Augustine Tang. Bridget, come on, Bridget. Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We're going to start with you. Huh? Good morning, Mr. Councilman Diaz. Um, my name is, and good morning to everybody in the room. Uh, my name is Mario Peña. I'm a TOC um, licensed driver. And I'm here this morning because I feel that with the number eight taxi driver killing himself, um, I believe that all the authority are underestimating what's going on in the industry. Um, it's a shame that the commissioner, that one of the guy or one of the driver who killed himself blame a straight to TOC, that she never here to hear the testimony. And I am worried. I am worried with the situation um, on behalf of my community in the Bronx, I wanted to say that we are losing the respect for the enforcement department of TOC. Beside all the problems that we're going through, they coming to persecute us, to abuse their authority, to underestimate us as human beings because they not allow us to not even complain. And I'm going to say we are losing the line of respect between the, co between the, um, uh, the enforcement TOC department and the driver. We work with the police department 24 7, and we never got issue with the cops. But the enforcement department or TOC are abusing the authority, and who knows what's going to happen? We have enough problem. As, as a taxi driver and the way they are treating us is making me worry. Thank you very much, Mr. Dia, and thank you very much to all the council members. Muchas gracias, Mr. Peña. Uh, good morning, Chairman Diaz and the members of the Four Hire Committee. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of David Beyer from the Committee for Taxi Safety, as well as the men and women of the taxi industry who provide transportation on New York streets every day. As we already know, there is a plethora of unequal regulation on the state level. Um, there's a 50 cent MTA surcharge, an additional 30 cent taxi improvement surcharge, as well as a 250, um, now a 250 congestion surcharge for every um, ride in the MTA improvement zone. This totals $3.30 just for government mandated programs. These fees do not include the $2 base fee 
um, to pay the driver's salary. This is a total of $5.30 before the cab even moves. In contrast, FHVs operating in the city are only required to pay $2.75, a price that is significantly lower, especially for riders looking to take cheaper rides. Um, being that all of the congestion pricing reports have found that the rapid and unchecked increase for four hire vehicles have been the primary cause of increasing congestion, it makes no sense to um, more highly charged taxis whose numbers have remained fixed for several years as compared to HVs that have gone up rapidly. Um, more importantly for this hearing, um, there is a problem with the regulations in the TLC. Um, as you've already heard, the TPEP system offers um, real-time data, whereas self-regulation has an inherent advantage and is likely to result in um, under-reporting. Even more so, this is true for rides that are coming from outside of New York City. We've seen an increase in rides coming from Nassau County and Westchester, as well as Connecticut and New Jersey. It is unlikely that FHV companies will be reporting those rides in New York City. Um, we ask that TLC consider revising its policies to match the realities that we've discussed, um, the reality is that this unequal regulation will continue to hurt what is already a dying taxi industry. Thank you very much. Sí, buenos días. Mi nombre es Basilio Beltré. Eh, en el día de hoy yo he tenido un discurso y lo he cambiado por la forma que yo he visto en cómo se está buscando solamente impuestos para la ciudad y no se está pensando en el taxista. Yo pienso que... Good morning, my name is Bercilio Beltran. I am here on behalf of taxi drivers, and the commission is not taking account of what they're doing, but they're taking account of what they're doing against us as the drivers. In the community of the taxi drivers, we have had five sites. And the people we have in this community of taxi drivers don't matter to anyone. I think someone should pay. Creo que alguien debe de pagar por esos muertes. I believe someone should pay for those deaths. Porque son muertes inducidas. Those are deaths. En, entonces la pobreza donde ha llegado el taxista. In the poverty that the drivers have been exposed to. No les importa a nadie porque cada día estamos más pobres. Because it's nobody because every day we are in more poverty. Aquí no hay un taxista que esté pagando su renta a tiempo. Here when a driver y solamente se está buscando impuestos para la ciudad. ¿Qué está pasando con esta ciudad? Y ese, nosotros no tenemos ni siquiera el derecho de ser esta cita porque we don't have not even the right to be a cab driver. La aplicación de Uber y Lyft han hecho con nosotros lo que han querido. With the apps of Uber and Lyft, they have done harm to us. Sabemos que eh, el Uber Pool es un beneficio para la ciudad. We understand that Uber Pool is a be it's beneficial towards the Pero city. Pero donde está el beneficio de esta cita? No hay Where un taxista que quiera hacer ese servicio. That perform this type of service. Es una forma de quitarle dinero a la MTA. Que it's a form of, of taking money, the MTA. Se lo permiten a Uber hacerlo y buscan los beneficios de nosotros los taxistas. They allow it to Uber and our benefits of the drivers. Entonces nosotros queremos que nos tomen en consideración. We want you to take, uh, we want you to take the drivers into consideration. No, nosotros no somos eh, empleados de tercera categoría como se nos está tratando. We are third party employees. Y es muy humillante para nosotros el trato que la TLC nos está dando. And it's a struggle on the treatment that TLC is giving us. Queremos que nos tomen en cuenta. We want Gracias para todos. We want Thank you. Bridget. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Bridget Felix, um, and I, I did have a comment, but I'd like to share uh, Jose Rodriguez's comment, if that's okay. Muy buenos días para el presidente del Comité for Hire y los demás miembros del Concilio que le acompañan. Mi nombre es José Rodríguez, soy presidente de la Asociación de Taxi, Taxi Driver Defense Group. Good afternoon, my name is José Rodríguez. 
Good afternoon, Chair Diaz. My name is, I'm here on behalf of the Taxi Defense Group. Tengo dos puntos para explicarle en estos momentos. El primero es con relación a la vista pública que pasó en el mes de agosto. I have two points to express. One that happened, the, the past public hearing that we had. Donde fueron aprobadas diferentes legislaciones. In where different legislations were approved. Incluyendo la de la regulación de las diferentes plataformas. Including the regulations of the different platforms. Que entraban en vigencia el día 14 de noviembre. In which they became effective on November the 14th. El cual no sabemos por qué la comisionada de TLC desacató una legislación en que fueron aprobadas en el concilio y el gobernador y el alcalde aware, firmó dicha ley. In which we are not aware why the tax limousine has not authorized or have not made effect the law that the governor had signed. En vista de eso, el concilio y el alcalde deben de tomar carta en el asunto. In spite of that, the council and the mayor should take into account removiéndola de la posición que ella ostenta en estos momentos porque ella no está por encima de la constitución de los Estados Unidos. Usted está pidiendo la renuncia de la comisionada. Sí, porque ella no puede estar por encima de la constitución de los Estados Unidos. Yes, because she cannot be above the constitution of the United States. En segundo orden, con relación a la ley que entra en vigencia el día primero de, de enero. With the law that went into, it's going into effect on January the 1st. La ciudad debe de buscar la solución a corregir el the impasse city, que hay con el entaponamiento dentro de la ciudad. The city should find a solution of what's going on within the city limits. De qué forma? In which Sacando way? Sacando los vehículos pesados que hacen delivery en el día en todas las, eh, las empresas aquí. Removing the heavy cargo vehicles that make deliveries on a daily basis in the Porque ellos son los causantes del entaponamiento del tráfico, they porque the, tienen áreas destinadas para ellos, pero the aún main, así... They are the main people to be blamed because they are the ones that are congesting our streets. Aún así, ellos parquean los tro en doble parking y la mayoría de las calles aquí son bien estrechas the y esa es la causa del entaponamiento. The majority of our streets are very narrow and that's the majority problems that we're having in the city. También deben de darle un curso de capacitación a los drivers de NTA porque las guaguas de transportación pública also ostentan una placa oficial also, there should be some kind of training for the drivers of the MTA because they also make a lot of congestion. El bus es oficial, pero el chofer no es oficial. The bus is official, but the driver is not. Y ellos no respetan las leyes de tránsito. They do not respect the transit laws. En varias ocasiones, ellos cruzan con la luz roja, se paran en el medio y entaponan el tráfico. In several occasions, they go through red lights and they stop also transit. Entonces, para eso es donde el gobernador tiene que ponerse a mirar and that's where los videos que salen a la luz pública a diario. On everything that's going on on a daily basis. Y cuando ellos le busquen esa solución, entonces nosotros estaríamos de acuerdo que ellos apliquen el incentivo que quieren aplicar no a nosotros, pero ellos tienen primero solution, que buscarle la solución al problema. ¿Cuál es? Sacar los tro haciendo delivery en el día y ponerlo a hacer los delivery en la madrugada, que es la única forma de evitar el entaponamiento de la ciudad. The only form of avoiding congestion. Es cuanto. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you. Gracias. Are you going? May I? Um, it, this congestion pricing um, is very worrisome. It's an extra amount of money that obviously eight drivers um, could not afford, thus committing suicide. I think that uh, there, there shouldn't be any more fees placed on to these drivers, not alone um, if the applications are going to change charge the drivers 
double or triple the amount, calling it a glitch. Um, all of these problems that we've been having, I think that uh, the commissioner, Mina Hoshi, where's the camera? Because she, she says that she sees it on the camera, she just leaves, doesn't even sit here to listen to us, very considerate, um, needs to get fired. How do I make a formal complaint so that we can change the commissioner? She should have been looking at the core issues and the core problems instead of driving TLC agents into the Bronx, into Washington Heights, giving them fines, and having these drivers commit suicide. Therefore, congestion pricing shouldn't be happening. Okay, uh, Bridget, as you know, in the last hearing, the commissioner sent a deputy commissioner, and that deputy commissioner sat in here for the whole meeting, listening. And I agree with you, the commissioner never stayed. She it's rude. Leave. But uh, that's out of my hand. That's her choice. It's like saying, I want your money. I don't want to listen to you, but I do want your money. Here's a fine. Now go kill yourself. Not nice. OK. And I also agree with you imposing more fee to... I, I'd like to rate a negative F, just to avoid you asking me. Negative F? Yeah, huh? Yep. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your cooperation and participation. Kobe? Ah, you know... You gotta bear with me. A sh sh Solomon Hans Schwartz. And Lan Sin. Lan Sin. That's what you call that? Loud sink. Oh, is it back on? All right, thank you, good morning. We're standing with you, we're standing with you, sir. Good morning, members. Good morning, Chairman Diaz. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a CEO of Lacus Technologies, the first car sharing in professional space. We specialize in black, black cars and taxi cabs. We pretty much make um, driver's rental experience much easier than it used to be for many years. And it's one of the key problems that we currently have with the taxi industry. I do believe the congestion price will help New York City, believe it or not. Drivers will be making more money as the traffic will decrease. London has shown that traffic rate has decreased by 30% after implementing congestion pricing. Therefore, our technology is able to validate all the records submitted and ensure that changes are being distributed correctly. We encourage to collect all trips recorded for a between yellow taxis that will allow everyone to pay fair amounts. We are willing to work with the city, state, to ensure that congestion pricing is implemented at its best. I think there should be an RFP uh, to choose which system will be performing in the best interest of the city, state, drivers, and passengers. I don't believe that there should be one company who will be doing all the auditing. I'm done. Will you please? Uh Say your name. Alexei Medvedovsky. Good morning. Uh, my name is Solomon Neuschatz. Uh, I'm an owner driver of Yellow Taxi. Uh, for 18 years now, my family has been in the industry for 40 years. 
Uh, this congestion uh, pricing that the state wants to put, uh, we just have to call it what it is, and that's a tax, okay? This is a, a tax that's gonna burden um, to the drivers solely, and I have proof to show. When we started with the TPEP systems back in 2007, we started taking records. Um, since then, there have been other companies that have been uh, you know, taking this information. I don't know why the governor's not looking at it. I was making more money back in 2009, 2010 and paying less with the MTA tax. Now I'm making less money and I'm gonna have to pay more on the tax. Uh, I ask of you, council members, to please put a stop to this because what is this, the future of our industry now? Every single time the MTA messes up and they go into debt, you know, the state is gonna start collecting money from, you know, yellow taxi drivers now. Uh, and as we all know, when a tax comes through, uh, it never goes away. It only gets increased. Case in point, the MTA tax has never gone away and it's been around now for the last 10 years. This has to stop. So I ask of you please to help us to speak with the state to put a stop on this proposal because it's, coming, it's gonna be coming directly out of my income. And I give the TLC a full blown F. Hi. Uh, my name is Lal Singh. I'm owner, yellow cab driver. I'm driving 30 years. This city congested fees is, we have nothing to do with this. This is because of Uber. Because the TLC and Limousine Commission, the survey say 47% car running without fear. Why don't the 47% car they put out so the city can breathe? And if they bring, start charging $2.50 from us and we go out of business, we are already starving. We have no money anymore to, we, can, we have no money to pay. And we only option left bankruptcy or we can do the suicide. I don't see the any other way. Thank you. If if the people sometimes see they be charging 250, they say, what is this, what is this? They open the door, go away. Uber charging ahead of the time. And uh, what I can do, who go to pay the two, I go to pay the 250 and I go to lose the fear. Okay, if they start charging 250, there's no way we can pay the medallion. No way I can pay the mortgage of my house. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, again, let me explain myself. This is a problem that we are facing. My committee is facing, with, been facing that problem too. This is a problem that the state is imposing us. This is, has nothing to do with us. The state, the governor and the legislature has said that they gonna find money for the NTA. And one of the ways that the governor is finding money, according to him, to help the NTA is to impose a tax, practically. On, 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 on taxi drivers, even though they say ta the passengers, because the passenger would be the one that at the end had to pay for it. So they, they, the yellow taxi drivers supposed to charge $2.50 to passengers and the other $275. 200, $2.75 to drivers. And that's supposed to be those vehicles that entered uh, the congestion zone in, the, in Manhattan. Mr. Mr. Council, so who has the ability to put a stop to this? Because, I mean, what does the yellow taxi industry have to do with the MTA? You know, I mean, we transport people. I do a service. I, this is not what I signed up for 18 years ago, and this is what, not what my family 40 years ago 
you know, got involved with. We believe that, you know, they believed as immigrants when they came here that they were going to buy a medallion, invest in it, and then pass it on to their family for their future as a way to retire. But you can, I can't even do that. If something happens to me and I get sick, yeah. tomorrow me, I can't work, I can't get a driver, garages are not going to pay me nothing. How do I live? Let me tell you how it works. City council made laws for the city for the five boroughs, not for the state, for the five boroughs. So any laws that we made is applicable to Bronx, Brooklyn, Staten Island, Queens, and Manhattan. The state, state legislature, and the governor made laws for the whole state. And their laws apply to us. And when they make a, made a law, the legislature, they, they are above us. This is something ridiculous. This is some, this piece of legislation, this, this requirement is, is, is ridiculous, uh, especially when you have yellow taxi drivers um, going bankrupt and some taxi drivers killing themselves because they cannot comply with, uh, with, with what requires and, and we are putting more pressure on them so they could keep killing themselves. That's what the governor is doing, and that's what the state, state legislature are doing. Keep putting more pressure on them so they could keep killing themselves, because they will not have, uh, the pressure is, 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 is horrible. I will continue talking, I will continue speaking, I will continue writing, I will continue saying, sometimes what not other people don't say, but the governor is wrong, the state legislation is wrong, is wrong, and they are abusing. They are imposing uh, a tax to the to the to the to the drivers or the taxi driver to the city and the city of New York in order for them to find money. So let's see what we could do. Well, I, I would not keep quiet. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. This is what we could do. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you coming today. This is... Oh, I'm sorry. We got one more. Okay. <laughs> okay. My name is Mohammed Tipu Sultan from New York Taxi Worker Alliance as also as a driver, also as a physics background from CUNY, and also very highly mathematical with the mathematics. And working with the New York Taxi Worker Alliance since 2005 and fighting for the driver, for the workers. And I'm standing right here, sitting right here to testify on behalf of the drivers, of the, on behalf of this higher vehicle industry. The city council and the mayor must step in a defeat, the yellow cab drivers who could see an as much $15,000 in income at the time of unprecedented devastating. Over 90% of the yellow chiefs will be affected as the searches, $2.50 applies to the chiefs of the originated below, 90, below 96 Street in Manhattan. The majority of the yellow fares already thousands of Thousands of owner drivers struggle to hold on their medallion, fighting the bankruptcy. They struggle the forcefully, and that have plugged the thousands of drivers, fellow drivers. The value of medallion has fallen eight by the 80 percent, reflecting the reality how much owner can actually cover the mortgage based average fair revenue. Yellow cab driver. Owner driver, lease driver, who lose even 15% ridership due to the surcharge and the tips already down from the Uber building business model that did not even the customers pay on, will be likely to be wiped out 80%, will be suffer as much as $15,000 pay card. What, the, what driver will be survived in this devastating? The state will be shamelessly stealing from the poor, 
people who have nothing left to give. The state and the city need to be understand. The state and the city need to understand that one stable cash cow, the yellow cab, has been destroyed by unlevel comp competition. Instead of burying it, the city and state need to help stabilize it. By the time of measure was passed in March, four drivers had taken their life and financial devastating because of this. It was heartlessly and cruel attack by the Albany to pass the searchers. Today, the number has risen eight suicides, among them four Yola Cab drivers. Yola Cab have already contributed close to $1 billion to MTA and since 2009. Meanwhile, Uber and, Uber and its cohorts are getting brick searchers for the same poll trips. Had that driven down the MTA ridership. Albany is crushing the sector and workforce that contributed all these years while rewarding business model that already directly. Sir, your time is up. Okay. I have one more minute to say one. One. Please, this is the driver's feelings, please. The, how can the city stand by and watching the state institute the tax will be lead to the massive bankruptcy, homelessness? Can the TLC even guarantee that enforcement of the searches can be equal among the meter yellow cab, outfitted the TLC regulated technology, Uber, Lyft, etc.? The city council has to intervene with home rule message. City Council has to intervene with home rule message, calling to the state to delay the implementation and address the issue, the concession pricing, comprehensively and after the facing reality of devastation of this yellow cap industry. I'm really happy. Let me take one more minute to that. Thank you so much. Thank you very much uh, to all of you and to all of uh, you in attendance for, this, for being here today. Uh, the Four Higher Vehicle Committee, uh, I, as a chairman and the member of the committee, we are, we are all committed to work for, in behalf of the drivers, on behalf of the industry, industry, and to be sure that we do our best to alleviate the burden that it's been put on you for many years, many years. This, does, this is nothing new. Everyone abuses you. The, 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 the basis abuse you, the drivers, the, the insurance companies, the, the leasing companies, the uh, renting companies. Uh, everybody take advantage of it. Now the governor is also doing it, imposing taxes on you. So. Let's see what happens, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you coming today. Thank you very much for being here, and this meeting is adjourned.